everyone to episode one. We we decided to start a podcast because we got some really cool people that we're in business with. So today I wanted to talk to my good friend Zach Purdy, uh, who is absolutely crushing it in real estate. He's a he's a Mike Furry agent, as you can see in the background, the poster. And uh, I wanted to 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 put my guy Zach Purdy on blast and introduce him to the world as we you know start this new journey all together. So Zach, how you doing today, bud? I'm doing great, man. How are you? I am, man. I'm I'm doing pretty good. I was uh, I'm so excited to introduce you to my friends and 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 really just talk about your business and and so you know can you tell us about yourself? Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm in. Uh, first of all, I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, yeah. You no, know, pretty big, pretty big market, but uh, that's that's where I'm at. Um, been in real estate. I have I have actually had my license for um, these almost six years now. Um, finishing up my second year full time though. I didn't really start really doing anything until uh, January of last year, right before COVID. Um, nice. You know, I had a full-time job, so I originally just got my license just to make a couple thousand dollars extra and go on vacation. Um, mm -hmm. That was my main goal when I started. So finishing up my second year full-time, um, uh, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. Been been with Mike Ferry coaching since uh, March of last year, well, February of last year. So okay. when I started full-time, I jumped into coaching. So you're, you're, you're in your first couple years in real estate? Correct. Yes. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I gotcha. So, um, how, how was the first year been? Is this the first year? Or is it the second year? This, this is the second year. First this, year started last year. Okay. So the first year, how, how was that? Like, you, you know, how many homes did you sell? What would you, would you close as far as sellers versus buyers? What was that like? Pretty good. Um, last year I closed 20 deals. Um, okay. And most of them were, I was pretty buyer heavy last year. Yeah. Um, Made about sixty thousand dollars, I think. Which, you know, one bad. I mean, Congratulations. I, okay, so so sixty thousand dollars coming from what you did before. What, can I ask? What would you make before? Uh, that's that's almost exactly what I made before at my full time job. So, uh, man. Okay. It, it, it was. I thought it was great. <laughs> that, it, listen, if you can be an independent contractor and make the same amount of money, who right. who wouldn't want to do that? Right, right. Yep. Yeah, so I, was, I was happy then. All right. So, so first year to second year, what was that like? Um, second year, uh, been so I've also started a little team this year. Uh, we're gonna do you know collectively about thirty three this year. Uh, thirty three so, transactions. Yep, and um, really started this first year in the same path as last year as far as being buyer heavy. Um, okay. Then I sat down with um, Tom Myers, who's also a Mike Ferry coach. Uh, he happens to be my regional manager. We sat down okay. and did a mini, did a mini uh, business planning session um, in May. And so yeah. since then, I've really rearranged my business, and I'm about 64% now sellers to buyer ratio since then. Wow. So you, you literally went from like 80% on 20 yeah. deals to – to 30, 33 deals, did you say? Yeah, yeah. And 64% sellers. How, how'd you do that? Um, you know, got serious about prospecting, you know, learning my learning my scripts, knowing a little bit what to say, and really yeah. just, just talking to more people. Talking to more people, uh, really knowing what to say. Yeah, exactly. I got you. So I guess Mike always says if you're a new agent, you got to do the three Ps, right? You got to practice. Right. You got a, a preview and, and then you got a prospect. It sounds like you, you did a lot of a lot more prospecting. I did. I did. I got a, got uh, more serious about it. I never really had a um, schedule until, you know, middle of this year. Yeah. Was that hard for you? It was it was hard to be consistent, but, you yeah. know, I, I was also dealing with a little bit of complacency. And, uh, yeah. you know, one thing with working with Mike, he uh, – Made me raise my goals for, and um, yeah. to kind of fight that. <laughs> I got you. So, so complacency. You know, Mike says that's the the disease of the human spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it, it comes a lot of times when you're making too much money, almost. 
Yeah, I, w- I was making about the same. Like I said, I made this about the same last year. I'm gonna make mm-hmm. over double that over double that this year. Um, but so I had right. To, so you doubling your income. Oh yeah, yeah, more than that, more than people. How does that feel? It feels great, and you know, now I've just kind of raised my standard of living, basically. So raise your standard uh, of living. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. that's that's exciting. So we met at. Uh, how, how do we meet? We met. Um, I think we met at the Superstar Retreat, didn't we? At Superstar Retreat, and yeah. uh, I think we were just in the hallway. And your 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 friend that you were with, he he's a barber. Yeah, he uh, <laughs> he just, he just passed his class. So shout out Andrew. He's getting right past the state exam and get his license. That's awesome. And he complimented me on my haircut, I guess. And that and then we just yeah. started talking. And yep. uh, and then um, so you were you in coaching at that point? Yeah, I was. I, I've been in okay. coaching since last February. Oh, gotcha. And and your coach was Mike. Uh, Mike Slackish out of Pennsylvania was my first coach. Great coach. And then yep. um, you you had asked me uh, who my coach was, and I told you. Yeah. And then you're like, uh, would you? What was that conversation like? Um. Well, first of all, I didn't even know that he really actually coached personally. So okay, uh, okay. So for the audience, it was Mike Ferry, right? Right. And right. you were blown away that I was, yeah. And um, you asked, like, so how how did you end up with Mike? And what do you remember what I told you? You told me, yeah, you told me uh, then that you called him every day at seven thirty, left him a message, and bugged him until he he agreed to coach you. Yeah, <laughs> or I just asked him. I just asked him, right? Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah. We, we put him on that learn long-term follow-up plan, uh, Dave Knight. And so yeah. uh, I told uh, Zach, all you got to do is ask. All right. And so you, you asked Mike, and then what happened? Yeah, well, I didn't ask him there. I didn't really get to talk to him there. We uh, At the Fort Lauderdale event, <clears throat> um, I went up to him and asked him during the first break, and it, he, he told me no at first. He told me he was leaving. Of the course. Country. Uh, I left they the- all do. And then, um, again, I talked to my regional manager on the next break, and he, he kind of said the same. He said, ask him again. So I did. I asked him ask again. Him again. And, and uh, you know, by surprisingly, he agreed to it. it. Surprisingly, he agreed to it. That, that's interesting because, you know, mm-hmm. what happens is we we put limits in ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, right. So, so, so Zach said, I made $60,000 in my last job. Naturally, unless I grow, I'm only going to make sixty thousand dollars at my new job. So it sounds like you really went through a growth process. You you went through the process of becoming a better Zach. What well, what was that like? Um, it was. I mean, it was great. I mean, just realizing that the sky's the limit. You know. Yeah. Um, set higher standards, which is kind of yeah. what Mike taught me. Set yeah. higher standards, raise your goals. Um, and now I'm just like, it's like, it's unbelievable what I'm going to do next year. And I, yeah, I'm congratulations. Gonna, yeah. So, no, so Mike, Mike said yes to you and you coached directly with the man, the, the legend, Mike Ferry for how long? Um, about a month, month or so. And then, uh, oh. right now I'm coaching with Ira Nadich. He, he's yep. a, uh, yeah, me too. Yep. Yep. He called me on a, he called me, uh, we had a coaching call Monday. He called me on a Friday, said that he wanted Ira to work with me on some specific things for about six, yeah. about six eight months. So, right. And, and when Mike Ferry tells you to do something, you, you ask him how yeah. high, right? Right. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and, and so I don't know how many people ever in the real estate game has spent a month directly one-on-one with Mike Ferry. I mean, you, you did that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. So what were three or four things you learned working directly with Mike? Um, well, like I said, set higher standards. Um, you know, as far as, I mean, that goes with like thinking big. Um, we, yeah. he, you know, pushed really working my database, which is something I haven't really worked, even though yeah. the majority of my deals are still coming through my database. I haven't even been working them. I haven't been working my database like that. So that was the one thing we were working on a lot here recently. Uh, so database, yeah, database. So, so a lot of people ask me, what, "What's what's up with the Mike Ferry sales system?" I said, "Dude, you got to try it." And they're like, "Isn't it cold calling?" I'm like, I I want my competition to think that, but the truth is, it's a database right. system, isn't it? Right, it is. <laughs> so, 
What was the second thing you learned from Mike? Um, well, he, he had me calling more um, just listed, just sold. I was mm. focused on for sale by owners and expires. And yeah. he asked me why. And I said, well, it's, you know, I, I call just listed, just sold. I feel like those ex expires and for sale by owners are a lot more immediate. Yeah. And he said, well, you know, I'd like to put some logic into our conversation. So let's think about this. Mm. And, and we said, why do you think it expires immediate? I said, well, they had their home on the market. He said, well, it expired because of what? And I said, well, more most time because of price. He said, great. And he said, would you agree we're in the best real estate market we've ever been in? Mm -hmm. said, yeah. He said, so how immediate do you think an expired actually is if they've been on the market for three to six months in this market and can't sell because of price? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know, that's a great point. He mm -hmm. told me, uh, you just got to talk to more. You got to do more just listed, just sold calls. You will find the ones that are immediate. And then. Conveniently, the very that week, I had like three leads that were ready to move right away. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you took his advice. Yeah. You actually put it in the immediate action, and then you you got some immediate results. Uh, I I did. I did. Huh. Maybe we should try that once in a while, right? right, right. <laughs> what else? Was there anything else you learned uh, working with Mike? Um. You know. One of the things I learned is he asked me on one of the call, he would ask me a question and I would go on, you know, explaining it because I'm a big analytical, so I feel like I have to yeah. make everything perfect. He I said, suffer from that too, man. It's okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it, it's hard for me. So he asked me, he said, let me ask you a question. Do you think you talk too much? Said, well, if you're, if you're asking me that, then yeah, I guess so. He said, basically, I need to write on a three by five card, shut up and listen so and put it on my computer. So I need to do more listening when prospecting mm -hmm. versus talking, uh, which has been a big, big change I've gone through. Wow. Wow. That's interesting. Um, there, there is a, someone had told me it's that 80, 20 rule. You guys are familiar with the 80, 20 per, uh, Pareto's principle. And it, it essentially it says 80% uh, of the wealth in any country is owned by 20% of the people. And then the, the same guy that told me that he said, you should be talking 20% of the time. Your client should be talking 80% of the time. Now, if you're talking 80% of the time, you're dominating the conversation. Right. But if I'm talking 20% and they're talking 80%, <laughs> aren't we controlling the conversation? That's exactly right. So it sounds like that's what you learned from Mike. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And so, so Zach, what's your story? I mean, who, who is Zach Purdy? Where did he come from? Where is he at now? Where is he going in the future? Um, so I grew up in Indianapolis and went to a little, or not a big high school here, Ben Davis. Um, yeah. Graduated there, was probably 1,200 people in my graduating class. So it's one of the bigger yeah. schools around here. Um, yeah. Went to Indiana State University for a year, and that was probably 364 days too long. Um, yeah. <laughs> didn't really do didn't really do anything there. Um, yeah, yeah. Came home and then uh, just ended up getting a job in a warehouse. And you know, like I, I got lucky with a pretty good job in a warehouse, making sixty thousand a year. I was pretty happy yeah. with it. Good amount. Um, People watching this would die for sixty thousand. Well, some would. And at that time, I I yeah. thought sixty thousand was a lot. And then yeah. Um, so did that. Was working there for about six years, and you know, yeah. but there wasn't. I started wanting more started wanting more yeah. like you know I, I started you know i guess i started thinking a little bigger um so yeah i left there went to another warehouse where i you know thought that there was a opportunity to grow as far as management and grow up the ladder um yeah went there for six months and the best thing that ever happened to me is they was there i was there for six months that hey it's six months where uh we're closing down so, whoa yeah so i was like oh. well, okay now what well, i mean i already had my real estate license so I was talking yeah. to the manager and said, man, I really want to give this a run full time. And so yeah. I closed down in uh, December. I started right away full time real estate and haven't looked back. Nice. Good, that's awesome, man. And, and so you're you're right now, you're 20 deals in the 30, mid 30s. What's the goal for next year? I think I think most of us see it behind you. Yeah, 50. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good. So. What do you have to change? You know, what do you what do you have to start doing that you're not doing to get to from thirty to fifty? It's doable. I did it. 
Easy. The only thing I got to do is uh, be strict about my schedule. Focus. Just focus. Mm. Focus on my schedule. That's it. Okay. So focus on the schedule? Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. And, and so what does that look like? What, what's foc- What's being focused on your schedule mean to you? Well, I know Mike says a lot, you need to block out the morning routine. Uh, yeah. The morning routine has got to be the same. And that's one thing. You know, I've, I've, I've never just been consistent on it. I've never been consistent. That's all yeah. it's going to take is being consistent, prospecting when I'm supposed to prospect, um, and then working and then keep on improving my skills as well. Mm, okay. So so the morning routine and, and really improving your skills. Yes. And that's right. part of the morning, right? Yep. Yep. It is. Like you and I role play uh, Wednesdays at 730. Right. <laughs> Listen, sometimes we, we miss it. You know, sometimes we, we make it, but at least yeah. it's on the calendar and we – we always try to get better every day. Right. And so what have you learned going from, you know, the transition of your mindset from 30 to 50 versus like what you actually have to do? Let's talk about mindset of that. Mindset, you know, um, you know, just thinking bigger, I think, is just insane. Like, well, this is really possible. I, I never thought that this was possible to make this kind of money. And, and yeah. Uh, um, you know, sell this much, you know, even as a full-time realtor, I didn't really believe it until the middle of this year, I started really thinking bigger and, uh, yeah, went to, uh, got to go to dinner with Bernie Gallerini a couple, well, about a month ago now. And, uh, that was, I was just mind boggling. It was insane. How big the guy's company. amazing. He is. He the is. guy's amazing. He's, yeah. he's a big, he has a big company, but doesn't it start with him being a big thinker? Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's the number one thing I think is just thinking big. Uh huh. And, and so what are you doing that's good that you need to do better? Not different, but something you're actually doing that's good, but you need to maybe shift it up to great. I think um, presenting, a listening presentation, just keep on improving that. Um, the, the listening presentation. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really, really more so following the listing process. Mm, okay. One thing, one thing me and Ira were talking about just yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Guilty, by the way. Most, yeah, yeah. I don't always follow it. Uh, we have the plan. We have, but sometimes when they say, well, I'm, 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 I'm going to be there today. You, you kind of drop what you're doing and you go, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. That, that makes sense. And I, and Ira and uh, Nina uh, Edmonds on the call, she, she coaches with Ira. You coach with Ira. I coach with Ira. Someone asked me this morning, who should I hire as a Mike Ferry coach? Mm-hmm. Ira Nadich. You know, he's, yeah. you know he, he's, he's helping us out. And so um, you got, you've got a family. Correct. Correct. You know, yeah. You've got, you've got a couple like kids. A, you got two kids and one do really any day now. <laughs> yeah. So how do they feel about you, you know, dad being a, a top producer and, and building that, up for for the family there's they're they're so young i mean my daughter's eight and son's five and they're so young they don't they just get toys and they're happy yeah well uh, so you like giving them toys yeah yeah would you, my wife, would you, my wife loves it though she likes it okay yeah. is she working she is she works she works full-time she's got a really good job uh, she works from home full-time good um, okay she's, she's still gonna take four to five months off when she has the baby Nice, nice. So yeah. I, I'm curious. Thirty transactions—that's a lot of money. Uh, you said it was almost double sixty. It was, yeah, double. But I'm gonna make probably about 150 this year. Congratulations, man. That's awesome. And going from 30 at 150 to 50 deals, what's that going to be in income? Um, it'll actually it'll be right around 300. Um, it'll be between 270 and 300 because of the way my uh, company split works. That's a, that's okay. And so the difference in increase, I'm just curious, and I'm going to make an assumption that going from 30 to 50 deals, she doesn't make that much, does she, with that difference? Uh, she makes she makes pretty she makes probably about 70, a little over 70. Perfect. She makes but the, right, but the increase from 30 to 50 that that'll be more than the 70 she makes. Oh yeah, yeah. So essentially, what I hear is if you don't make 50, you tell your wife she has to keep working. <laughs> yeah, we've uh, we've joked. About, she, have any, she likes working, but eventually, um, eventually, want to get to where she doesn't have to. Right, right. So, so you know, you've got the kids as the why, you got the wife as the why. 
but getting the 50 deals really, it means a lot to you. I mean, what's that going to do for you? Um, it'll do a lot. It'll open a whole lot of opportunities. Um, you know, I've also been, you know, talking to Steve Colt. Um, we've been talking about, you know, future and in, investing some of that money. Yeah. Uh, getting better with it. So um, yeah. I'm going to buy a couple of rentals next year and a couple other things. So. Yeah, that's awesome. I remember I went up to Mike at a retreat and I said, Mike, you know, I made a quarter million bucks. Uh, he's like, congratulations. I'm, he's a like, hell do you? I'm like 35. He's like, or no, it's 30, 32. And he's like, you have a wife? I'm like, no. Kids? No. He goes, you need to learn how to manage your money. I was like, yeah, I know. No. I don't know what it is. He goes, you need to go talk to Steve Cult. And for yeah. four years or three years, I've been talking to Steve Cult and Every, every week, every couple of weeks. I mean, he's the guy that pushed me to do the 18 listings last year in, in, in the summer. And, yeah. and you, you had the good fortune of introdu being introduced to Steve. I do, man. I talk to him. I, I talk to him once a month now. So. Oh, that's awesome. Because what happens is as you make more and more and more and more, you spend more and more and yeah. more and more. Yeah. So Steve's going to help you with that. Awesome. Um, yeah. Any any what do you like what would you like to leave us with like what would you you know zach purdy he there's a video on youtube there's you know, spotify and that guy zach purdy said this and he changed my life from zero to 30 from 30 to 50 he really just whatever he said made the biggest difference yeah i i think really the biggest difference was me is just believing that it's possible uh mm. thinking big um you know i've got my goal at 50 for next year, but actually I'm really thinking higher than that. Um, one thing me and Mike talked about was the difference between thinking too big and set realistic goals. So, yeah. um, you know, jumping from 30 to 50 is a pretty big jump, but I, I'm, I'm more like 75 ish. So I, I really think you, Joe, you just got to believe. And really the biggest thing um, that the, one of the biggest changes that has happened for me and my business is, I really just started practicing blind faith and just, mm. really, you know, like when Mike, when Mike told me, he, when Mike asked me why I wanted him to coach me, I said, man, I, I just want to be coached by the best. And mm -hmm. if you tell me to run naked through a neighborhood screaming, I'm a realtor, I'm a realtor. Mm. I'm a realtor. And yeah, so I really changed, made that switch in mindset. My business mm. is really, really elevated. Wow. Wow. So, so really just, you know, thinking bigger and, and just, practicing blind faith in the process yeah yeah because i mean mike will make you just follow, following him he'll, he'll make you whatever you want to be yeah yeah you know it's interesting someone asked me the other day what did you get from working with mike because i worked with him for like eight months and yeah. and um you know one of the things i said to this a good friend of mine who who was the guy that i got into real estate and i said it it created certainty yeah it created un yeah it got rid of all the options because one of the things that I noticed about working with Mike is his, his message on stage in his podcast, in his recordings and on the phone, it's the same message. It is. Yep. And so for me, you know, it reminds me of this poem right here. Uh, Until one is committed, the, the poem by Gorta, or Gorta, uh, Gotha, I don't even want to say his name. Until one is committed, there is hesitancy. The chance, the chance to draw back, always ineffective, uh, ineffectiveness concerning all acts of initiative and creation. There is only one elemental truth: the ignorance which kills countless ideas and splendid plans. So commitment creates that certainty. It sounds like you committed to the system, yeah. and it got rid of any other doubt, any other options. It did. It did, and that and that was the big thing for me because, like I said, I'm such analytical. Um, yeah. I used to look mm -hmm. into, you know, other other programs as well. I try to take little bits of every of, of, of everybody. And that's one thing I told Mike, look, I just I just want to focus on you. And since yeah. when I made that switch, my business took off. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you, man. Now, uh, you know, we've got a few people on the call and I'm going to open it up for some questions. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please uh, ask Zach. We got we got like 10 more minutes here, uh, 15 minutes or so. Any questions you have for Mr. Zach Purdy? I have one. <laughs> um, yeah. You spoke um, about uh, Mike Ferry talking about your schedule and things like that. Um, this is something that 
I've been really, really struggling with, with just even tackling the morning schedule. What are some uh, tips and tricks on how you, you know, just waking up early and on time and being in your chair by, you know, your prospect? Yeah. So um, one big thing for me is I have role play partners throughout the week, every, a different one every week, starting at 730. So I know I need to be in the office and, um, you know, on the phone at 730, basically, uh, which, you know, requires, it's, it, it, it's, I guess it's like the accountability, you know, getting up. And then um, one thing I wrote, so I, I still struggle with this a lot. One thing I wrote made me do just this last week was print out my schedule for five days and then write down what I did when I was, when I was supposed to be doing it. So if I'm supposed to be prospecting, well, write down what I really did. And that really mm. held me accountable. And the first thing he asked me yesterday when I talked to him was, did you do that? And I said, yeah. And, you know, it, it, it held you, it held me accountable. You know, um, I've stopped looking at email um, before, before 1130 is when I'm supposed to, the first time I check it now in the day, I took it off my phone um, because it's a big, it's a big distraction. Um, I mean, I still can check it through my phone, but, I don't have it automatically pop up as a notification now when I get one. Um, other than that, yeah, just really focus. It just takes the commitment. That's all it is, is just being committed. And then um, keeping your goals in front of you. And obviously, I got my goals posted behind me, my three biggest ones for next year. I got it posted by the light switch on, in my office when I got to leave the office. I look at them every day when I'm leaving. Um, you know, I've got, I've got them at home posted. So it really just a reminder, hey, this is what I want to do. And I know to do that, I have to stick to my schedule. And that's all, mm. that's all it's going to take. Yeah, that's awesome. Any other questions, guys? Hey, Zach, Dave Knight, how are you, bud? Hey, I'm good, Dave. Awesome, man. So I know we uh, briefly uh, um, spoke about using the platform Trillo. Okay. Yeah. Um, can I get with you later today or tomorrow at a good time? Just want to go over five, 10 minutes with you about that platform. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Just give me a call. Well, I'll reach out to you, brother. Okay. Uh, can you just, um, well, what is your phone number real quick, bro? Cause I get to get onto my team meeting. It's a well, for, for referrals for Zach, you know, how, how does someone send you referrals? So you can, you can reach me. My, my phone number is 317-361. 2711. You can email me, Zach, at zachherty.com. That's awesome. So I wrote down 317 361 2711. Correct, sir? Correct. Okay. I'm out, people. Thank you so much, Milton. Thank you, Zach. Yes, sir. Keep rocking yeah. and rolling, okay? You're welcome. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> All right. So, so, Zach, you know, um, one of the reasons I wanted to do this is so we can. You know, create our database within our database and have agents, yeah. you know, I, I send you referrals, you send me referrals to Orlando. Yeah. We're going to have agents from DC. Uh, Steve Colt's going to be on here. His, his wife, Iris Colt, I'm going to interview her. I mean, these are fantastic high end top producer, millionaire realtors. And like right. I tell you all the time, you're a millionaire realtor. It's just not there yet. And, right. and uh, you know, hopefully we can all send each other a business. And, and the other thing is everyone knows about Mike and some of the top, top, top producers, but there's people uh, like you and I that are wa waiting to explode out. You know, I, I did 30, you know, uh, 32 deals a few years ago, 61 deals last year, going to touch 100 deals this year. And, you know, no one knew about me four years ago. Right. And so you're in that spot four years ago. Yeah. So I, I'm projecting that you're going to be on every stage in five years. That's yeah. what, that's my thought. Uh, I, I think I told you this a couple of weeks ago, but I appreciate you kind of uh, been not a coach, but more of like just another mentor for me since we met. And I mean, you didn't have to, it's not like I'm paying you or anything like that. You're just doing it out of the kindness of your heart. So yeah. I, yeah. I appreciate I that. All, I think everybody appreciates you as well. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, listen, any, any other questions? Uh, Kevin, Rancy, Zoe, you guys have a question uh, or two yeah. for, for Mr. Zach because you guys are right there where he was last year. Yeah, what's up, Zach? This is Zoe here in Orlando, Florida. Man, I got a question. Um, you had mentioned that you transitioned from expires, from only doing expires and FISBOs to doing more justice and just sold calls. Can you talk a little bit more about what your 
transition look like into those just list of just soul calls? Um, yeah, I just hopped on my dial and that's what I started calling. <laughs> uh, I mean, re re realistically, that's all it is. Just, you know, I've been making a lot and, you know, they are, you, you hit get a lot of rejection with just listed just soul calls and that's perfectly fine. Um, it does take a higher number of contacts to get to, you know, to find the one, but the really the key in the just listed just soul calls that I've noticed is really digging for motivation. They say, you know, they got to move in a year. Okay, well, what's important to you about moving in a year? Um, mm. Just keep on keeping on. So one one thing I've done with just listed just soul calls now, that Mike made me, you know, switch up a little bit. I used to add those people. If I had a good conversation with them, I used to kind of add them to my database. Um, Mike put a screeching hold on that, made me stop, told me don't do that. Um, so now basically, I mean, one thing I do, I send out a weekly email every every Saturday at 10 a.m. to my database. Mm. I have a good conversation with them, and they're they're not ready to move, you know, within 10 years or whatever, two years, even whatever. Then I just, you know, I'm offering to be a real estate resource for them. I stay in touch with them via email. I get their email address. I put them on there, and I keep kind of keep it moving. I also know know my business card as well. Um, mm. come a couple of things do. What was that? So you're not calling them every quarter. You're just sending them an email if you have a good conversation with them. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's, that's, and you know, I just confirmed this yesterday. Kind of this is what I was doing. Um, one thing. So I, I'm sure everybody's heard of Mike mentioned the incubator database. Um, yeah. One thing he actually <clears throat> sent me a document. Uh, we talked about it one day. The next day he emailed me, said he was, he was having this assistant overnight a 10 page document and one of the things i highlighted in there that was important he said the incubator database should be you know leads you're following up on your your calling once to twice a month so the way i look at it is is if you are going to move in six months or less i can call you once or twice a month mm -hmm. someone says they're gonna they're gonna move in 10 years i you're not i'm not calling them once a month even if yeah <laughs> No, I'm not calling them once a month, right? Yeah, they're a lifer. <laughs> and the the thing is, when you start building, if you start, you know, putting all these people in your database, calling them every quarter, it really bogs you down, and and you are focusing too much on that instead of finding the immediate business by calling more people. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of one thing that him and I have taught me about doing these just listed just sold calls. So that's kind of how I'm doing it now. Gotcha. Thank you, man. Continue great question. question great question you know i think uh like zoe for example he spends the majority of his time on the just listed just sold and so would you say just spend the time there or should you mix it up a little bit no definitely mix it up so mike mike had me calling um he wrote he made me write down five five fifteen all right yeah yeah i was just about to say that yeah yeah he, he made so, me do the same thing Yep. Yep. So he told me, you know, recall five people in your database every day, call five, any combination of for sale by owners or expires, and then call 15 just listed, just sold contacts. Mm. Funny thing is I did that for a week. He said, how'd you do? I said, I did it every day. He said, well, why'd you stop at 25? <laughs> what you told me to do is I didn't tell you to stop there. I told you that should be your minimum. Yeah. That, that's actually funny, Zach. Cause he, because earlier this year, I was like, Mike, I want to do 100 deals. He's like, slow down. I was like, what do you mean? Oh, I'm thinking big, Mike. He goes, you're going to do 80. We're going to make your goal to do 80. I'm like, Mike, I'm capable of 100 deals. He's like, well, I'm not going to get mad at you if you hit 80 by September. Yeah. But let's let's lower the goal so that you can achieve the goal, so you can feel good about the goal, so you can propel the goal. Right. And I actually didn't understand that until yesterday. because. Yeah we just closed number 81. We have another uh, 11 in the pipeline to pen for the end of the year. And I'm, I called Mike. I was like, Hey, uh, Mike, you were right. He's like, what are you going to close out this year? I'm thinking like 90, 92, depending on a few things. He's like, well, that's not a bad year. Is it? Like, okay, Mike, you're, you're right. You, were, so, you really got to, you really got to take it in, um, in like steps too. Cause he told me that I was, I, w I had the behavioral pattern of someone who's doing 100 deals a year, but I the results weren't that. So instead of trying to take the whole 
the whole pill all at once. I needed to work my way up to that. So he kind of broke it down, broke me down a little bit. Like, no, instead of doing this, you need to be doing this. Mm. So. so it sounds to me like this is not even a, a conversation about the how to's of real estate. This is more of a mindset, more of a spiritual conversation of how to get from zero to 50 deals. Is that, would you say that's accurate? Yeah, it is. It, it really is. Mm, gotcha. All right, man. Well, listen, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Zach Purdy. I know you're busy. If you, if you guys have any referrals for Indiana, I, I don't really know where it is, but he lives there. And so send it to Mr. Zach Purdy. Do you have a website, a, a social media, an Instagram, an OnlyFans? Yeah. What do you have? <laughs> OnlyFans. Uh, I have an Instagram, Facebook. Um, you can find me on uh, Instagram or Facebook at Sold Buy and Buy is B U Y, like you buy real estate. Sold by ZP. Yeah. That's it. And then uh, me, the website, ZachPurdy.com. Yeah. Nice. Zach Purdy, Z A C H. Yes, Purdy, -U -R -D. Got it. Yep. Okay, good. Well, listen, my first couple uh, episodes that I'm committed to doing is Mr. Zach Purdy, who's going to be a beast. He is already a beast, but you just don't know about him yet. Next week, someone I'm, I'm really proud of, Mrs. Nina Edmonds, is going to be here. I mean, a year ago, she was driving Uber, uh, you know, delivering groceries. And this year, she's going to touch $150,000 as a single girl in Atlanta, Georgia. So listen, thank you guys so much for being here. James, and I'll talk to you soon. Oh, she's past that. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you guys soon. A yeah. Any other questions? If you guys want to stay on, we'll 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 take some questions for me yeah, or for it. Zach. Either way. I got 20 more minutes to my next appointment. So Oh yeah, I got some time too. Come on, guys. Questions. Mm -hmm. The only way you learn is you ask a question, you, you open up your mind. This is about learning. Come on, Kevin. Come on, Dunya. She left. Dunya left. Oh my god. Um, uh, I know I have questions. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. question. All right. You get on the phone. You're prospecting. You're doing a great job. You're, you set three appointments in one day. Yeah. I'm the kind of person that gets just a little bit overwhelmed because it is just me. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. I'm having trouble. I'm literally going through this right now. I am having trouble with balancing like, okay, I need to get up on time and prospect, but I set all the appointments. Now I got to get the CMAs ready and get them delivered yeah. to the sellers. How do you balance all that? Because for me, sometimes I start getting afraid and say, oh, let me not prospect today because I have all these other packets that need to go out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I used to do the um, same thing, uh, the exact same thing. Me and Ira had to talk about this. I would set an appointment and then immediately after I set an appointment, I would start, you know, doing the research, doing the uh, pre-listing package and, you know, doing everything just to prepare for the appointment. Um, you know, in my schedule, we have, um, we have a half hour and then, and then another hour of admin time basically. And then I got an hour of lunch that I could you do admin through then. He really made me focus on saving that for the admin time, do it in the admin time, prospect, prospect, prospect. And I think one thing I struggle with is as being an analytical, um, I overanalyze every presentation I go on. So um, I think what they're wanting me to do is just go on more presentations. They don't have to be perfect. I don't have to have the perfect pre listing mm -hmm. package. You know, I mean, I've got them made. It only takes me a couple minutes to do them. Just going to do a quick CMA, <clears throat> but I ended up prolonging it. And so instead of doing that, just focus. Okay, I got to do my admin time between 11:30 and two. All right. And th that's just, you have to, you have to, one thing I've done, you know, they say that your prospecting time is an appointment. You want to never miss a, you want to never miss the listing appointment, right? So don't ever miss a prospecting appointment. You got to treat it as an appointment and yeah, you, you can get overwhelmed, but you know, you just gotta, what I've learned, you just gotta, you gotta push through it. Next. Nice, nice. Another, another thing is keeping your goals in front of you. Because I know I'm going to have to do what he says. To him I so I've got my goals posted everywhere now. Hey, Nina, um, I don't know if you noticed back here. These are pre-listing packages yeah. already ready. So I'm sure Zach has that somewhere. Yeah, I've got them. 
Yeah, yeah. So, so get the, the get the packages set up. Your goal every month is blank. How many listing appointments do you have to go on? Mike says work like hell to get to ten a month. So theoretically, you should be at ten packages printed every month. Your job is just to fill in the packages with the CMAs. Put okay. ten slots on your calendar. Like for instance, let's say you had a three o'clock appointment and a five o'clock appointment Monday through Friday. Nina, how many appointments is that? That's 10 for the week. 10 appointments for the week. Now your job is to fill in the boxes. We're playing a game, the numbers game. So if yeah. I don't have a three o'clock appointment, I'm going to replace it with another prospecting appointment. Yeah. Theoretically, in most cases, right? Because life does happen. But five o'clock, same thing. Replace it with another prospecting session. Can yeah. everyone on this call honestly say they've done that one time this year? They've done, they've re replaced it with a prospecting session? Correct. You got an appointment slot at three yeah. o'clock. And if you didn't have an appointment, you actually prospected at three? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, have, I recognize my schedule now of uh, appointments from two to 4.30. And if I don't have an appointment, I have to prospect during that time. That's it. And so, you know, the, the seller, uh, if Zach and I were talking this morning, what happens when a for sale buyer cancels? Yeah. We try to reset it, but if they cancel, we say, good. Now go replace them with a better one. Right, Nina? Yeah. Cool, cool. All right, guys. Well, listen, I think, Ed, Ed, you had a question. I saw your hand was raised. It's a, you know, you just have to unmute your, uh, he's gone. <laughs> All <laughs> right. So listen, uh, if you guys have any questions for, for Zach, text me. We're going to put this on YouTube. We're going to rip the audio and put it on Spotify. I think we're going to, we're, we're just going to go everywhere, be really, really bad at this so that someday we could be really good at this. Good, yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Lee Marcus, actually, here's, here's a quote I'll leave you guys with. Lee Marcus was on stage at a superstar retreat right before COVID. And he said, most people aren't great because they weren't willing to be really bad. And so a lot of you guys, Zoe, you know, you guys, uh, I tell you, make a hundred contacts a day. Be really terrible at your scripts because that's real play. And you have to role play too, but be really bad for a while so that you can be really good for a while that makes sense yeah so listen if you guys want to sign up for coaching go to mikeferry.com uh if you guys have any referrals for indiana text uh, or, or call zach purdy and i'll talk to you guys next week all right see you guys